you reported it first name out of the gate when ESPN had their layoffs a couple of weeks ago. There's been a lot of speculation since from people who think this was not just an ESPN move, that maybe the NBA and Adam Silver decided to step in because Jeff is often critical of refs and other things. Um, I have my perspective on it, but let me hear from you first on that. So when I found out that Van Gundy was out, I did look into that. Um, ESPN had a statement that they made, but they weren't on the record anywhere. Uh, sources stressed to me that it wasn't the NBA. So let me put that out there first. However, I, do I think that Adam Silver gave a directive and said, let go of Jeff Van Gundy? I don't think so. There's no reason to believe that. There's no evidence to believe that. Um, do I think it's very possible that the NBA, which is very heavy handed in terms of what they think of coverage, uh, had made it clear that they weren't the biggest fans of Van Gundy, who you said incorrectly, uh, you know, criticizes officiating, will say things about the NBA in terms of the product, et cetera, uh, that they didn't love it. And, you know, if Adam Silver sitting next to Bob Iger, or he's talking to ESPN chairman uh, Jimmy Pitaro or the president of content Burke Magnus, that they made it clear. And here's a case where they're trying to reduce salary uh, and, you know, probably going to move Doris Burke in there, you'd think. Um, that, uh, um, that, that, you know, one plus one kind of equals two there. That said, there's no evidence that there was a directive. Um, and we can't really even say for certain that that's what went down. Uh, but as I said on our podcast with John, I, to me, it's such a head scratcher. I heard about it during the NBA finals. I actually looked into it. it would have been a good story right before game five. Cause that's when I was looking into it. Um, but, uh, you know, couldn't, first off the list was changing. So you had to be careful. Um, you know, people are on the list, they're off the list. And so, uh, you can't, you know, and you also, I felt like, um, I didn't report on anybody unless they were told. Because things first off change, and secondly, I think ESPN should be was the, was the one who should be telling these people the information. Right. I you know, let's let's say you want to buy into the cons- not you but the general you want to buy into the conspiracy that maybe the NBA had a hand in it, or maybe even ESPN said, you know what, you know, we hear from the NBA about Jeff. Let's just move on from this. The, the the ironic thing about it is, I mean, there's no bigger champion for the NBA than Jeff Van Gundy. And this is a guy who's a lifer. You know, you know this, the stories with the Knicks slept in his Volkswagen or whatever shitty car he had at the time. Like, the guy is all about the NBA. So to try to spin it as he's not good for the league because he calls out nonsense sometimes is is kind of rich to me because I don't think you'll find anyone who's a bigger fan of the NBA than Jeff Van Gundy. First off, and most importantly, I have a Volkswagen. So, uh, I mean, I, I don't think that, that's a shitty car, a Volkswagen. Well, whatever his car was. I yeah, don't, I don't even think know there's, that, there's the famous story where he would sleep in his car when he was the Knicks assistant head coach or whatever. It's like one of those stories. Volkswagens like, you know, are shitty cars. All right. Well, I, All right. whatever. I, yes. I, didn't, I, yes. I don't know anything about cars. So, all right. Fair enough. Sorry. Yeah. That's okay. I'm not, I really don't care, but I just thought it was yeah. funny. Uh, you said or that. a Hyundai, whatever it was. I don't yeah, know I think. Yeah, maybe I'll so, look it up while you speak. OK, sounds good. Uh, yeah, look, I, I I think the better your broadcast is, the better it is for your games. I think uh, announcers, you know, we just went through it with the uh, Joe Buck, Troy Aikman, Tom Brady, Romo, all that in the NFL in terms of these big name announcers getting so much money. Um, I think when you watch sports if the announcers are really good, it enhances the enjoyment of it. It makes it bigger. And ESPN has had trouble with their booths. Uh, they finally had to pay uh, Buck and Aikman more than $30 million a year uh, to solve Monday night. They've struggled on Sunday night baseball, college football. I think Herb Street's very good. Fowler's not great as a play-by-player. Uh, they, they've struggled. Uh You know, when you look at the NBA, though, that's been something that's been strong for 17 years. Van Gundy's done nearly 100 uh, finals games. Breen's done 100 or more than 100. Um, And so, yeah, I don't see it. I don't know why you would do that personally. Um, I get it. You know, Van Gundy took a pay cut a couple years ago. Uh, So, I mean, I'm sure he's making millions. I don't know the exact numbers, but he wasn't making as much as he once was. 
because I think it was a significant pay cut. Uh, and so uh, I would want Jeff Van Gundy in the booth. I think he's, again, it's like such a weird, you know, there's just weird conversations all over the place in sports media. But to me, uh, he might be and very well is the best game analyst on TV. So to, to I agree. decide to get rid of him doesn't make right. sense to me. Same here. Um, it, it's hard to understand it on any level. I And I guess the question then is, you know, if you're of the belief that maybe the NBA had a hand in this and you're saying you haven't heard anything like that, that would be good news in terms of if Jeff wants, you know, if TNT is interested, if NBC is interested, when they get the package, obviously a streaming service is going to come into this at some point. So you would think if the NBA is not, they don't have their hands dirty in this. Jeff will land at his feet pretty easily. Yes and no. Um, I think the yes part of that is he should uh, land on his feet. Like if I were Amazon or Apple two years, if you're, they're able to get the rights to a team, uh, to, to games, and Jeff Van Gundy's out there as a analyst – yeah, I, I think especially in a three-man booth. I mean, even a two-man booth doesn't really matter. He would be, I'd want to get Jeff Van Gundy. I, I mean, has TNT not try to do a Harlan, Jeff Stan booth? Yes, I mean, I think, I mean, look, I think with all these things and just like not just talking about Van Gundy, but I mean, we've seen this in the past with uh, with these layoffs is, you know, how, you know, how much flexibility does he have? Is he able to just go work someplace um, I think that's always a question in these situations, which is I've always found pretty gross um, when I get it. Like people, the average person is going to say, well, if he's getting paid still, then why does he care? I mean, all these people, Jeff Van Gundy, you look at it. I mean, he coached the Knicks, you know, probably made good money. Coach Houston, I think, made great money. Yeah. Has been at ESPN for 17 years. Let's say let's just say he's averaged two million dollars. That's a year. Let's say he averaged two. I'd say it's probably a little more on the average, but let's just say he averaged two. That's 34 million. So he's got plenty of money. Um, but that said, um, you know, so so he doesn't necessarily need the money, but so if people say, Well, he's getting paid, so who cares if he can't work? I mean, I think people want the action. They want to be involved. They he want wants to, to work. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. um, you know, and then if they limit you, that's where it's like when we talk about cast members and Disney and all that, and they try to, you know, act like it's a big family. Well, you know, put your actions where your your words are, because if that's the case, and I get it, there's legalese, there's financial write-offs that, um, that are business, uh, but... Uh, don't give me the one hand, you know, we care about everybody. And on the other hand, if someone wants to work in any of these cases and you're not going to allow them with an offset or something, I don't see how that makes sense. I don't see how that's helping. I don't find it very human. Yeah. You're going to let the guy, you're going to let the guy go and then say he can't go to TNT because he has years left on his contract. That would be, you know, pretty Bush league. I think Yeah, he is the I mean, best these, analyst in the these, game. I mean, you know, Keyshawn, you know, Jalen, you know, all these people right. who have money left on their deals, I, that's, you know, I, I think it, that's the circumstance. I could see ESPN doing it with Jeff more than those guys, especially if he goes to TNT, where TNT has already blows MB, you know, ESPN guess, out of the water. I guess, but you're choosing, they chose not to have him on their team. So, I mean, I agree. Like, I, well, I think his brother's there now. His I agree. But, there. but I guess, but they, they fired him. So, TNT. The, I, no, ESPN fired right. him. Right. My point. Right. I'm saying ESPN should let him go to TNT. Yes, um, they should. So, yeah, yeah I agree with all. you. Yeah. yeah. And the story is uh, it was a it was a 1995 Honda Civic okay. that he was driving as Nick's coach. And then the car got destroyed. There's this famous story from like something in the where it was parked by an airplane and the engine went off and the car it's, it's a famous story. You could Google it just, All right. but it's Jeff Van Gundy, but it's 1995 Honda Civic. So I apologize for s disparaging Volkswagen. 